Welcome to part five video series on how to deploy Azure Data Platform end-to-end -end with Azure DevOps Pipeline. Now, in this video, we're just gonna cover the full Terraform deployment. And what are we gonna to deploy? This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna deploy two environments, dev and test, and in each environment, we will deploy a resource group, data factory, data lake, SQL database, Databricks, and Azure Key Vault. But before we go into the demo, I just want a couple, I just want to highlight a couple of notes. This demo is not following best practices security. For example, in the networking setting in Azure SQL and Azure Data Lake, we can allow all networks. So this is basically opening these resources to the public, which is not a security best practice. But just to show you how the DevOps pipeline works, this is fine. Second thing is, Microsoft hosted agent is actually not recognized as a trusted uh, Microsoft services. And that's why we have to allow that whole network setting. And lastly, Terraform code, which I will show you in a bit, will grant the DevOps service principle, service connection, essentially, a new access policy in Key Vault to be able to insert any uh, secret into Key Vault. All right, let's head to the demo. To start the demo, I'm gonna show you my issue portal where I have only the, the prereq resource group with a blob storage where I'm going to store my Terraform state file. In my Azure DevOps project, in my pipeline, I've got my previous video, part three and four. And the first thing I want to cover here is the variable groups in pipeline library. This is essentially a way for us to parameterize the values in different environments. And what we're going to need is this bottom three here. So if you want to follow along this video, make sure you do create these three variable groups. And I'll just show you what the content within each uh, in a sec. But the idea is that we have two environments, dev and test, and common variable groups contain all variables that will be reusable across these two environments. And we just have this dev and test to uh, add additional variables that's going to be dedicated for this environment, dev or test. So if I just show you what I have in common, and if I just scroll down a bit here, and please pause this video, and you do need to create all these variables if you want to follow along. I have all the Databricks variables here, uh, which basically the uh, attributes of the Databricks, the name, the managed resource group, I've got the data factory name, data lake, key vault, resource groups, SQL database, SQL server. And if I just scroll down all the way to the end, I have SQL server, Terraform state name, and virtual network. If I just pick one example here, uh, SQL server name, you notice that there is a dollar and then environment in a bracket here. This is going to come from the other variable group. And so, for example, if I go to my library and then the dev variable group, you will see this is my value. So I've got environment variable with value as dev. This dev will replace the environment uh, parameter in the common variable group earlier. And the idea is that these values are the only ones that's going to be unique for dev environment. Again, please pause. Uh, we will, you will need to create this if you want to follow along. And if I go back and just show you what I have in tests, TST here, it's the same values, very identical, but instead of dev, I have TST in here. So that when I deploy a test environment, I will create a new resource group and all kinds of different names with TST on it. Briefly, I have this virtual network, private subnet and public subnet side ranges. This is effectively the IP ranges that we're gonna use for the virtual networks. Uh, we do ideally don't want to overlap uh, this, the, the IP ranges in different environments. So make sure you have that set up as well. And ideally uh, they should be different. Next up is the time to show you the code. 
I'm going to cover the pipeline YAML first. This is part five, telephone finance YAML. As previous videos, if you want to get the code, check my GitHub link in the description below. And effectively, this is my YAML code and it's got the same uh, header here, manual trigger and using Microsoft hosted agent. And now I, instead of one stage, I have well, or two stages. I have development and I have test stages. And if you want to have more stages or more environments, you can just copy and paste the whole thing and then just put that on, uh, on, the, on the bottom. Just replace the name of the stage and probably the variable groups. Yeah. And if you look at this one, uh, bear in mind that we, since we are going to um, uh, need the variables, we need to add this variable group here. So we need the arm, common, and for dev environment, we need dev. Now, what are we doing here? So we have the first task here called file transform, uh, transforming parameter to JSON file. We have a JSON file that I'm going to show you here now that contains a list of key and value pair uh, from resource group all the way down to virtual network. And this is going to be replaced by values in the variable, variable groups in the pipeline library that I shared just now. And the idea is that we want to replace the values, all the blanks in here with the actual values. And then we're going to use that to deploy the Terraform uh, infrastructure. This is what that's doing. So it's filling out the blanks. Here, this is just showing what's been filled out. So this is actually optional. You can keep it or just skip that one, uh, this one actually. The next one here is the same. So installing Terraform and initialize the Terraform uh, program there. So if we notice that it's going to pick up the Terraform state uh, and the going to the blob storage that was deployed in part three video in a previous video. And once it's initialized, you want to, as usual, you want to plan and you want to apply if you're happy with what you are planning. And the same steps is, is used for test environment, exactly identical. The only difference is the variable group. This is the only difference. Okay, now that we've got this covered, let's go check out the actual Terraform code. So we hover to the Terraform advance and if you click is main.tf, this is essentially the code. A better in mind, uh, it's, it's just not just, instead of just the main TF, we also need the variables.tf. Now this is required. If you don't have this, you throw, they'll throw you an error. Now what is this? This is effectively the variable name that came from the parameter.json you see here all that in here and we need to declare that in here and also providers this is essentially the terraform libraries that we need to import this will be actually used in uh, during the terraform init's uh, task in the main.tf we are creating resource group using values from the variables and this came from the pipeline library variable group and we've got data factory I comment out this VSTS configuration this is setting up the uh, code repository within data factory I'll skip that for now creating data bricks and associated VNet uh, if you're not familiar with data bricks there are actually two options to create data bricks one is within Microsoft manage VNet and the other one is our own uh, VNet and this one is the second one it's creating database in, in our own VNet the reason why we do this and our plan to do this in a separate video is is for security so for when you have your own your database in your own VNet you have full control on what traffic you allow or not allow 
Okay, it's Databricks along VNet, subnet, etc., including NSG as well. Go data lake here, and also a container. Databricks, sorry, my bad. SQL database and SQL server. Uh, just bear that in mind. The password of the SQL server is actually randomized, and it's going to be automatically inserted into key vault here at the bottom. So we create a key vault here now. And once we've uh, created a key vault, we assign access policy to the DevOps service principal or service connection. And then we will insert the key vault into key vault, the SQL server admin password. So it's all kind of done automatically for you. Now we have seen all the code, let's create the pipelines. So if we go back to DevOps, go to pipelines, and I'm going to create a new pipeline now. Just leave that there, and now go to repos. That one, existing YAML. I'll pick part 5 Terraform Advance. Once I've added in here, I'll just save it for now because I'd like to modify the name. Edit. In edit, I go to triggers. This is where I get to modify and add variable groups and also the name of the pipeline. Let me rename the pipeline first within YAML. Just go part five form advance. So go to variables. Well, I want to add all the variables that I need. I need everything but the basic one. Okay. You can see this is all the values that we're gonna add in here and all the common in here as well. Okay. Once you are happy with that, you can save. Back to your pipelines and if you click all in here you have that in here all right i think we have got the terraform yaml to show uh, both uh, to plan and apply so we i think we can now run the pipeline so instead of running both dev and test i'm just going to select Dev stage first. Okay, just to test. So I click run. As usual, the first time you create a pipeline, it will request a permission to the environment. So if I just click that one and I click permit, now within a couple of seconds, this is going to start running. Just by the way, running DevOps pipeline is takes a bit of experience. So the first time you run it, you might get some error and you may learn as you go. And now this is, this should be running in a couple of seconds. There you go, it starts running. Fast forward, now that after about five minutes, it is now complete for dev. If I go back to my resource group and I click refresh, you can see yeah, at least two new resource groups here. The first one here is for the data bricks uh, and clusters uh, to, to be created. This is the main one for that. And you can see inside I've got a bunch of stuff here from data bricks, data factory, key vault, so on and so forth. The ones that we set to create. Okay, now that this is looking good, we can now run it for tests. I just rerun this now. But instead of dev, I'm just going to pick test. All right. I think the same one because this is the first time, it will need permission. Permit. All right. I will wait. Also, fast forward. The test deployment is also now complete. I think again, if I switch to my resource group and refresh, I will see two new resource groups here as well for test environment. 
quick note if you are looking to destroy this uh, resource groups you can do so by going back to your code and just use the last uh, task here called terraform destroy and make sure you comment out terraform plan and terraform apply and just use the destroy task and then run it okay that's it for part five Azure DevOps pipeline deployment with Terraform. Join me for, for part six, where I'm going to show you how to deploy Azure Data Factory pipeline incrementally into test environment uh, shortly. Like and subscribe if you do enjoy the video so far. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.